Greetings, explorers of Middle-earth, my Gavanin, and welcome to this episode of Realms Unraveled. Today we are exploring the lore and legends surrounding the last remnants of elvenkind to dwell in Middle-earth. So, who were the last elves? Tolkien once penned a poem titled The Last Ship, which offers us our first tantalizing clue regarding the last ship to set sail from the Grey Havens. A ship with golden beak and oar, and timbers white came gliding. Swans went sailing on before, her tall prow guiding. Fair folk out of elven land, in silver grey were rowing, and three with crowns she saw their stand, with bright hair flowing. This poem tells us that aboard the final vessel to leave Middle-earth was a trio of elven kings. We can reasonably deduce that two of these three enigmatic figures must have been Celeborn and Thranduil, the revered rulers of Erin, Lasgallan and Lorien. The third, we can be all but certain, was Círdan the shipwright, the wise and ancient lord of Linden, who had shaped countless ships for their fateful journeys to the undying lands. This was the moment when the last of the great elven lords finally turned their gaze from the lands of Middle-earth, to the shores of Amman beyond the sea, leaving behind a world that was forever diminished by their departure. The precise date of this voyage remains a mystery, yet we can weave together the threads of history in order to hazard a guess. The last ship likely sailed around the time of King Alessa's passing in the 120th year of the Fourth Age. This conjecture springs from a poignant conversation between Aragorn and Arwen as he is laying upon his deathbed. The uttermost choice is before you, to repent and go to the havens and bear away into the west the memory of our days together, that shall there be ever green but never more than memory, or else to abide the doom of men. Here Aragorn reveals his belief that Círdan still lingers in Middle-earth, if Círdan had departed, then there would be no ship to bear Arwen across the sea in the Grey Havens. If he had departed much earlier, surely word would have reached the ears of the King of Gondor and Arnor, especially given the proximity of Arnor to Linden. We can also derive a clue from Arwen's solemn journey to Lothlorien after the passing of Aragorn. As she wanders through the now silent and empty glades of Lothlorien, she discovers that Celeborn had already commenced his journey to the Undying Lands. Yet, this does not confirm that the last ship had already set sail, as Tolkien states that some elves dwelled for a time in Linden before setting sail. In the days of the kings, most of the high elves that still lingered in Middle-earth dwelt with Círdan, or in the seaward lands of Linden. Another elf who elected to dwell in Middle-earth for a time is, of course, Legolas. After the War of the Ring, Legolas sought and received the blessing of his father, Thranduil, to lead some of the elves of Mirkwood on a new venture. His eyes were set on Ithilien, a region rejuvenated by the fall of Sauron and the restoration of peace. This move was an opportunity for elves, under Legolas's guidance, to bring their ancient wisdom and harmony to a land healing from the scars of war. And I, said Legolas, shall walk in the woods of this fair land, which is rest enough. In days to come, if my elven lord allows, some of our folk shall remove hither, and when we come, it shall be blessed for a while. For a while, a month, a life, a hundred years of men. In the year 120 of the Fourth Age, following the passing of his friend Aragorn, Legolas set about crafting his own ship, a vessel destined for the fabled shores of Valinor. His decision to build a ship of his own could be seen as an indicator that he might have indeed been aware that he had missed the last ship. Then Legolas built a grey ship in Ithilien, and sailed down Anduin and so over sea, and with him, it is said, went Gimli the Dwarf. And when that ship passed, an end was come in Middle-earth of the Fellowship of the Ring. At this juncture, we are presented with two similar scenarios. Scenario 1 unfolds with Legolas setting sail in the year 120. The following year, in 121, we witness the solitary demise of Arwen, overcome with grief in Lothlorien. 
It is after these events that the last ship makes its journey westward, carrying the three elven kings to Valinor. In Scenario 2, the last ship has already embarked prior to Aragorn's death. This leaves Legolas with no option but to craft his own vessel for his journey. Meanwhile, Arwen, her heart heavy with unspoken sorrows, travels north and finds Lorien abandoned. Here, amidst the waning trees, she surrenders to the depths of her grief as her spirit passes beyond the circles of the world. If we entertain the second scenario, Arwen's tragic end indeed raises the question of whether she would have been the final elven presence in this land. However, before drawing a conclusion, we must consider a crucial aspect. Were there any elves who chose to remain in Middle-earth permanently, despite the prospects that awaited them? The decision for elves to stay in Middle-earth was not one to be made lightly. It was widely understood among their kind that choosing to stay would mean facing a slow and inexorable decline. As Galadriel poignantly described, those who lingered would eventually fade into a rustic folk of dell and cave, slowly to forget and to be forgotten. Given this understanding, it seems unlikely that any elf would willingly choose such a fate. However, the rich lore of Middle-earth is full of individual choices and paths made for a host of fascinating reasons. The Avari, an intriguing branch of the elven race, are renowned for their choice to refuse Orome's call to journey to the Undying Lands in the First Age, a decision that set them apart from their kin. This is recounted in the Silmarillion, where the Vala Orome invited the newly awakened elves to leave Middle-earth and accompany him to the realm of Valinor. This invitation sparked a debate among the elves, who were then faced with a decision that would forever alter the course of their existence. But the elves were at first unwilling to hearken to the summons, for they had as yet seen the Valar only in their wrath as they went to war, save Orome alone, and they were filled with dread. To alleviate their fears, Orome took three elves, Ingwe, Finwe, and Elwe, to Valinor. Upon witnessing the splendor of the Undying Lands, they became advocates for the Valar's summons, urging their kin to embark on the journey westward. However, not all had the opportunity to meet Orome. Compounding their uncertainty was the insidious influence of Melkor, who had already sown seeds of distrust and fear about the valor among the elves. For the Avari, the decision to stay in Middle-earth was rooted in this fear and uncertainty. To them, remaining in the familiar lands of their awakening, understandably seemed like a safer and more prudent choice than venturing into the unknown. And let us not forget about the recently settled elves of Ithilien under the leadership of Legolas. It seems as though they may have also remained in Middle-earth. If they had indeed embarked on the journey to the Undying Lands with Legolas and Gimli, it is reasonable to think that Tolkien would have mentioned this significant event in the appendices. As discussed previously, there is a possibility that Círdan still dwelled in Middle-earth at this time. Could Tolkien have intended for the elves of Ithilien to travel to the Grey Havens and set sail from there? It is possible. However, if this was the case, then it seems strange that Legolas would not have led his people and travelled in the same manner rather than building his own ship. The theory that the elves of Ithilien elected to remain in Middle-earth is therefore a compelling one. Having chosen to settle and rejuvenate the land of Ithilien so recently, it seems plausible that they would be reluctant to abandon their new home. This suggests that their settlement in Ithilien was not a transient endeavour, but a committed choice to stay and assist further in the healing of the lands of Middle-earth. There are also doubts lingering around other groups of elves. The sea longing was said to be slumbering in the hearts of many. But deep in the hearts of all my kindred lies the sea longing, which it is perilous to stir. Alas, for the gulls, no peace shall I have again under beech or under elm. Those elves dwelling in lands distant from the embrace of the sea may have harboured no desire to embark upon its unfamiliar waters. This is not to mention the unyielding reluctance to abandon the cherished sanctum of home regardless of the price the world demands. 
Therefore, in answer to today's question, I arrive at the following conclusion. The tale of the elves does not close with a single definitive farewell. Instead, a multitude, thousands in number, embrace the destiny to remain. Their choice was one of gentle resignation, to diminish and to dissolve into the whispering winds of Middle Earth. As our journey through the enchanted realms of Middle Earth comes to a close, I would like to take this opportunity to light the beacons and call for aid. So, if you have enjoyed today's video, please remember that every like, share and subscribe is a beacon of support that helps me continue to put more time into making more videos like this one. Don't forget to join the discussion by sharing your thoughts and theories in the comments below. I always enjoy hearing your insights and perspectives. Thank you for tuning in to Realms Unraveled. Until next time, may the stars of Elbereth guide your path. Farewell, fellow travellers.